What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the MLB First Look podcast. We are discussing here on Wednesday night, Thursday's five-game main slate. We do have, as oftentimes, a split slate on Thursday, but we're going to stick to the main slate as we usually do on this show. I'm your host. As always, you know my name by now, Draft Sheet, and you should know his name by now as well, Gary USC, joining me to discuss this five-game Thursday slate. What's going on, Gary? Not a whole lot, man. Nice, uh, nice full day of baseball tomorrow. We'll be, cons- we'll be concentrating on the five game main slate, but I love, you know, baseball all day, especially when I'm working from home all day. So makes it nice. Absolutely. You get, you got to love it. And, uh, I forgot to plug in my microphone before we started this podcast. So I'm going to plug it in now and I think it will be a seamless transition, but why don't you introduce the slate and hopefully this like registers by the time I got to talk again. Yeah, so we, uh, yeah, we got five games. It's not, you know, pitching's a little, little, little hanky. Um, looking like I only, I only like about three guys so far. So should be interesting. It's a, not a lot of offensive spots either, which is weird. I think there's one clear spot that'll be really chalky, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see what you think on that. Yeah, uh, I think I'm recording to the microphone now, hopefully. Hopefully it's all uh, good to go. Um, I'm kind of with you. It's one of those weird slates where typically it's like, oh, man, the bats are in, a, in the, by far the most ad- advantageous spots, or it's like, oh, the, there's so many good pitchers that we want to roster. This is like a, a bunch of like a decent but not fantastic pitchers. And then, you know, when that's the case, it's like decent, but not fantastic offensive spots or hitters or anything you want to look at. So it, it, it will be an interesting five gamer. I think um, we'll work through it. We're, we'll go game by game. I think on shorter slates specifically, that's can perhaps be the better way to do it because you can kind of, you know, just break down each pitcher, talk about where you might attack them with a stack or a one-off or, you know, a mini stack, whatever it may be. So, yeah, let's jump into it. Uh, Milwaukee and Pittsburgh. Uh, a lot to talk about here, uh, specifically on the Brewer side of the baseball. Chad Cole pitching for Pittsburgh. I mean, he's been, I guess, I don't know. It's kind of like surprising. He's He's kind of still going in the league given his horrible performance over the last few years. But he's been okay, you know. I mean, I guess better than I would have thought coming into 2021. Still not a pitcher I don't think I have used yet, maybe once. So 6,400 against Milwaukee in Pittsburgh. I mean, I don't, like we said, pitching kind of sucks. So I don't, I'm not going to completely throw him out. I'm not a huge believer, but maybe. And then Freddie Peralta is the interesting talking point here because we're seeing Milwaukee uh, in, you know, we're in the middle of the trade season, right? We've seen, I don't know what 10 plus trades so far, probably at least I think we'll see another, I would guess 20 at least. So we're going to see a lot of teams move. Milwaukee is going to add pieces. They already have anyway, Freddie Peralta been fantastic all season for Milwaukee gets a pretty good matchup here. I've been saying this matchup against Pittsburgh is not, you know, it's not some slam dunk, but he has been very good, uh, 10K even on DraftKings. The problem, though, is that the innings concern. And I've talked about this a lot over the course of the year on this podcast, especially some of these pitchers who do not have a long track record of throwing a lot of innings, and even those that do are going to have perhaps struggles down the stretch. And Freddie Peralta was rolling through four innings in his last start against the White Sox, four innings pitch, five strikeouts, two walks, no one runs, just a single hit. 17.2 DraftKings points over four innings and 51 pitches. Like, he's on his way to perhaps, right, his best start of the year, I think, was in play yeah. in, the, in, the, in this one and pulled out of the game. And it's not clear if this is going to happen again. I think Milwaukee has sights on a World Series, and they don't think they can push Peralta, Burns, and Woodruff 200 innings in the regular season and then what another 30 plus in the playoffs if you're getting all the way to the world series so it's call them soft if you want but they're being smart about it and for dfs purposes i mean i don't know my guess would they would be like cut him to 51 and then kind of slowly ramp him back up right maybe 51 
60, set, like wrap him back up. Because when it comes to the playoffs, you want him to be able to go 100 pitches if he's rolling. But yeah. I think it could be a while before we see him there. So thoughts on that and Freddie Peralta, Chad Cool, this game in general. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I, just, I just pulled up an article on Peralta. He's already at his career high of innings and in 98 innings. So, and it looks like they, they're, they're doing some sort of six-man rotation, but not, you know, every six days. Like I said, they're, they might piggyback somebody on them here again. I could see them, you know, against Pittsburgh. There's no need to – I don't think there's any need to, you know, push them in this game. So, I don't – for 10K – I mean, Pittsburgh is, you know, even though they dealt Frazier, they still, I mean, they're still not striking out a lot. And they've been hitting a little bit recently, too. Yeah. So, um, Just too, too risky, right? Like, it's not like yeah. a guaranteed smash, even if you, if you told me he was going to throw 100 pitches, like, it still wouldn't be a, a total lock. And like, he throwing... probably gets us 15 DraftKings points. Like, if, he, if you guaranteed me that he's going to get us 15 DraftKings points, would you play him? Maybe. I mean, he, he would certainly Maybe. be in my pool at a lot, you know, if I was playing a number of teams, because there's, it's not like there's any pitcher that's even guaranteed to get to 15 on a, on this five game slate. So maybe yeah, we'll get some, tough. but it's just, I, I was just about to say, maybe we'll get some clarification, but like, why would the Brewers tell us when they're going to remove Freddie Peralta? That would not do them any good whatsoever. Right. Like they're trying to lock down, you know, the NL central, they're not going to, I'm going to tell the other team what they're going to do with their pitching. Yeah. Like it just, why it would make no sense whatsoever to do that. So we just don't know. I suspect Peralta will be slowly ramped back up from that 51, but I mean, they could keep him in the 50 to 60 range for three or four starts, five starts. You know, yeah. we, we, again, we just don't know. So uh, I think Peralta will pitch well for sure when he's in there, uh, how long that will be. We don't know. And a uh, probably pass, on both these guys. What about hitters? Um, Probably Milwaukee a little bit for me. Um, yeah. Milwaukee. I mean, yeah. they've, been, they've been hitting a little bit recently too, under the radar. I mean, the numbers, the numbers aren't really that, that good, but I mean, I just look at the box scores and, you know, just watching the games and, you know, on the MLB app all, all the time. And, sure. You know, they're not hitting bombs, but you know, they're, they're creating runs a lot. So is it, I, I is it fair to say that they're kind of – they almost seem like a little Giants-esque to me where they're kind of yep. like a lot of platoon bats and they're mixing and matching and, like, playing really smart with the, you know, with the pinch hitters yeah. and all that. So, it's like they're kind of – And they could get off. Escobar in the lineup tomorrow too. So, I don't know how – you know, they just traded for Eduardo Escobar. So, I don't know if he's going to be available tomorrow too, but that will be another bat in there. Yeah, he certainly could be, and he, he'll be a, a, a boon to that team. It's going to be interesting. I'm excited to see how these teams kind of transform down the stretch. Um, but yeah, Milwaukee bats would be the way here. I don't think I'm going to Pittsburgh hitters. I mean, maybe Brian Reynolds. He's just so good. <laughs> yeah. That, uh, I'm kind of willing to roster him because you'll get him at, you know, you get him at like two, I think I have him at 1% tonight. Like he's not like going crazy, but it's just still, yeah. a, I mean, for a relatively cheap guy who's hitting like he is, I'll take a shot there, but that's Milwaukee Pittsburgh. You know, we're going to have question marks on a lot of these games going just throughout talking about the slate. That's going to be a theme, I think, through the end of baseball DFS is trying to play the probabilities right. I mean, that's the name of the game anyway, but now we've got more variables thrown in. Anyway, Toronto and Boston, uh, Eduardo Rodriguez on the hill for Boston. He's been uh, eh, pretty good, I guess. Rough start last time. Was that a start? Uh, yeah, he came out yeah. after one inning. Yeah, okay, I remember this now. He came out. He was sick inning. or something. Yeah, he had a migraine. I think is what they said, which probably fine, I would guess. Uh, but still, I don't know if I want to play him against uh, Toronto in in Fenway, uh, and then Hinjin Ryu for the uh, for the Blue Jays. I have not been good at predicting the Ryu good performances. I, he's not a guy. He's been a really you know, on the service level pitcher over the last four years. Like if you just look at, I think he's like second or third in ERA over the last five years among all qualified pitchers. So can't deny his effectiveness, but I, I mean, I feel like. Tough. Yeah. These I, two guys, these two guys are in the same bucket as he is. They're similar pitchers, right? Lefties that uh, you just don't really trust them, but yeah. they do get the job done 
usually. So um, and they're facing two great offenses. Yeah, I, I, Plus, I'm, I'm passing th- on both these pitchers. I'll, I'll put yeah. it out there. I'm not playing. Plus, I'm seeing early. I'm seeing in you know, the site that I look at. There's possible rain in this game too. So that would even even muddy the waters sure, even yeah. further on the pitchers here. But I do like the bats on both sides here. For sure. Yeah. Which side do you like better, Toronto or Boston Mets? I'm, I'm def- I definitely always lean Toronto. <laughs> I yeah. just, I just love their lineup. It's right-handed heavy. Um, I mean, they're obviously going to be probably the. I would imagine they're probably going to be the chalkiest offense on the slate. Just how. Yeah. The slate looks. I, I think that's fair, and I feel more confident. Like I think. Eduardo Rodriguez gets blown up a higher percentage of the time here than Ryu does, right? Would be yep, kind yep. of my my uh, my tiebreaker there. They're basically the same price point: eighty six hundred for Ryu, eighty eight hundred for Rodriguez. Neither of us are are super interested there. Wouldn't be surprised if one of these guys pitched well, but uh, I could see also a very very high scoring game in in Boston. We'll see if the weather holds, but. Yeah, give me the bats here, specifically the Toronto guys. I just don't really trust Eduardo Rodriguez, honestly, yeah. especially coming off, you know, pitches one inning and that's, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but, yeah, I like Toronto a ton. Like you mentioned, they'll be popular. I think they should be. And uh, I'll pass, I think, on both those pitchers. Baltimore and Detroit. Um, we've seen Detroit kind of have a a pretty nice surge here um they're playing well i think their future looks looks pretty bright to me and uh yeah they'll get uh alexander wells uh, a lefty for baltimore baltimore just man they just don't have like their their lineups kind of coming together i think for the future but they just don't have a lot of pitching Uh, and then casey mize for detroit uh who's been pretty good you know i think for in his in his uh is this his rookie year did he play uh much last year i can't remember i think he did a little bit but i think he did a little bit yeah, yeah. but he's been solid right i mean f- for uh for a young pitcher um i think getting better too i i, I him and, and matt manning uh, manning hasn't been great manning's been bad but i have been impressed with improvements we've seen Tariq Skubal have his moments, right? Like this staff does seem like one on the rise and so does the lineup. So uh, if you, you know, I'm on the, I'm on the Detroit side of this one. I think, I think Mize is a decent play at home here against Baltimore, 6,900. They're kind of letting him go again. We do have to be slightly concerned with the pitch count, but let him go 79 pitches last time out. I think they're going to work him back up. It seems like is what they were saying. And he wasn't even pitching that well. And they let him throw 79 pitches. So I think we'll see Mize above 80 on the pitch count here. If that's the case, 6,900 against Baltimore. Again, not a cakewalk, but pretty good price point. So I kind of like Mize. Yeah, I'm on Mize too. Um, Baltimore has just been – I mean, they've been really bad the last few weeks versus righties. Um, and they're, you know, they're right-handed heavy team for the most part. And Mize struggles a lot with the lefties. So, I mean, he's got to navigate Mullins – and maybe Santander, um, and that's about it. So, yeah, I'm in on Mize, and, you know, Detroit scored 16 or 17 runs today, and they didn't even hit a home run. So imagine if they start hitting bombs again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely in on Detroit here. Yeah, yep, yep. Uh, it's just, I mean, you get a good matchup right from the get-go against Wells, and it's hard to predict exactly who Baltimore's going to bring into the game after that, but – yeah. Not anybody very good. So, yeah, give me Detroit. They seem like they're rolling right now. Uh, Badu, if he's in there against the lefty, I think he will be. I mean, he got, I think he got three hits today against uh, a lefty on the mound. It was Jay Happ, but not that Wells is much different. But even beyond that, I mean, Eric Haas is like just an elite play. Uh, Grossman, I've liked what I've seen from Willie Castro, especially from swinging yep. from the right side. So, yeah. Give me, give me Detroit. Give me Mize. Give me the Detroit bats. I think that's a, a strong stake. And uh, we're, you know, we're uh, 60% through this slate. Only a couple more games to go. Uh, Oakland and the LA Angels. Uh, Frankie Montas pitching for Oakland. He's been pretty rock solid, uh, especially recently. Just a good pitcher. I mean, a little bit of a disappointing start to the year for him, but I'm still a believer. Um of course, Shohei Otani is going to be a, a good play as always against Frankie Montas, but I do like Montas overall, especially if Jared Walsh remains out of the lineup. I'm not sure exactly what his status will be. 
And then uh, Alex Cobb, I think, is uh, a little bit interesting as well. Uh, he's pitched he's pitched well this year. A lot of strikeouts, a lot of whiffs. Um, you know, Oakland, d- definitely not a terrible lineup by any means, but not one that I'm, like, running away from. Uh, I do th- – I don't know if either of these guys are on the trade block. Montas, definitely not, right? Oakland is – No. Is, yeah, Montas is, is not going anywhere. Cobb, maybe – and they just got Starling Marte, too, so he might be in the lineup. Yeah, he should tomorrow. be, I would imagine. So, yeah. yeah, Montas isn't going anywhere. Oakland's not trading anyway. Any, any good they they gave but... up Lazardo though. Has he kind of fizzled out a little bit or what? Lazardo? Yeah. Yeah, I think, well, uh, he did not pitch well this year for the A's and has kind of been up and down with injuries. But I yeah. like the trade. I really like that trade for both sides, to be honest. Uh, Miami's and- loaded with pitching. I mean, they're absolutely yeah. Loaded. So I mean, Lazardo still, you know, I don't. What is he? Twenty three, twenty four. He's still touching ninety seven from the left side with pretty good breaking balls. Like, yeah, uh, you know, he might just need a change of scenery. It's it's not like Oakland's a dumb organization and doesn't know how to you know develop a pitcher. So from that angle, I'm like, well, maybe there's just some, but like. There's not anything wrong with Lazardo. He's got an electric arm. There's no question about yeah. it. So I, I'm interested to see what the Marlins can do with him. And then Marte, you know, you're making a push for the playoffs, for the World Series. It's a great piece to add. So this is one of those straight – I like it. I think it was just straight up one for one. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, any of you season-long players out there, I, I know there are a, a, a number of you that listen. Uh, I like adding Lazardo. He's available in almost every league. Um, and I think the uh, the Marlins, who are really short on pitching, right, because Rodgers is on the DL, Pablo Lopez is on the DL, Sixto Sanchez is done for the season. Uh, Alcantara is still going, but he could be on a innings limit at some point, especially with them kind of shutting it down. So I think Lazardo is going to go into that rotation. I think they're going to give him a shot these last two months. And I wouldn't be shocked if Lazardo went on a run in Miami, right? Like, yep. it just wouldn't shock me whatsoever. So he's a, he's a fun ad for season long. Uh, anyway, back to it. Yeah, thoughts on South on Oakland and L.A.? I think you're on Montas as well. Yeah, I, I love Montas. I, I think uh, Jared Walsh went on the I.L. today, so he's not going to be in the lineup. Um, just worry, I'm just worried. Just have to navigate Otani here. I mean, he could hit a ball and, you know, you know Montas will still – We'll, we'll still crush pretty pretty well for us. So I think he's a little bit underpriced for this matchup too. He's definitely my favorite pitcher on the top tier. Um, and Cobb, I, I can't I can't do Cobb. I don't like starting pitchers coming off the IL, especially when they had a blister. Yeah. yeah. It's you know, and you know Marte is coming in the lineup. I, I like Oakland. I don't, I don't really trust Cobb here either. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like I like the Oakland bats here in this spot. I mean, there's not a lot of, not a lot of ways to get different on the slate. I think this, I don't think Oakland, I don't, they'll, they'll probably be somewhat popular on this. It's only a five game slate. So, but I'm going to try to find a way and it looks like Marte's already in the pool for Oakland. So, um, so yeah, I'm definitely on the, on the Oakland bats here and Lazar and, and Montas for sure. Yeah, uh, we're we're on the same page there. Uh, I might sprinkle in Cobb, and then also if I'm not playing Montas, I'll probably play Otani in those lineups because I do think Montas will be popular. And uh, yeah, uh, I don't think I need to speak too long about Otani. He's just a yeah, great play. <laughs> he's, he's just phenomenal. Great. Yeah, he's incredible. Um, all right, last game of the night: Colorado, San Diego. Joe Musgrove pitching for the Padres. Been a little bit of a fall from grace for Joe Musgrove. Not that he's been terrible, but he started out the year. I mean, I think we were talking, oh, you know, went from Pittsburgh to San Diego. He's going to be like the best pitcher ever through a no hitter. He's been okay since then, but not really, you know, not someone that you've needed pretty much on any slate, to be honest. So um, this could be one that you need him. I mean, it's a five game slate. He's still one of the better pitchers, in my opinion, on the slate. And he gets Colorado, right? Uh, story at a home run tonight. He might not be on the team tomorrow. We'll see. Yeah, but, yeah. I do like I do like Joe Musgrove. Um, I have my doubts about him. I think he's been affected by the foreign substance crackdown. But still, uh, a pitcher that I kind of like just in general. Kyle Freeland has had 
five pretty good starts in a row, which I didn't really see coming. I mean, two were against the Dodgers, Padres, St. Louis, and Pittsburgh. Like, not not cakewalk starts. So, I don't know if you have a Kyle Freeland take. Seems like a bad spot for him, but he was pretty good against San Diego last time out, 6,100. I'm not saying I'm going to play Kyle Freeland, but I do think you'll see a lot of people go to San Diego. Yeah, for sure. San Diego's definitely going to be popular. I'm not a Freeland guy, and I'm definitely not a Musgrove guy either. I'm, I'm on team fade, you know, Snell and Musgrove. Yeah. I told everybody today, don't, don't play Snell. Please don't play Snell. I fell He's for just it. not right, and he got smashed. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I can see the Padres definitely going – going hard after Max Scherzer. They need um, him bad. They definitely need him. And he would be a good fit here instead. I think that's why they did. They kind I mean, of Scherzer, pulled back the Scherzer, reins. Scherzer's moving teams, I think. It's pretty clear at this point. And he wants to come to the West Coast. He's it's going to be, be the Padres or the Dodgers. And yeah, I think it'll he, be, he's, yeah. Yeah, he's definitely made it known that he wants to go to the West Coast. He wants to win. Um, he wants a place that, you know, he can, he can re-sign long-term too. So, yeah, I, I don't like either pitcher here. Musgrove is – Musgrove is always chalk, and he's definitely going to be chalk on a five-game slate against Colorado. And yeah, no, no question not, about that. No question. I am yeah. not doing it. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, at, yeah. you know, ten twenty-five Eastern time the night before that I will not be playing Joe Musgrove. <laughs> That's fair. But, I mean, there, there aren't that many good options, but yeah, I hear you. you you're playing Casey Mize over Musgrove is kind of one hundred percent where you're putting your line in the sand, right? I don't, I don't disagree it. with it at all, but it seems like that's – just based on this conversation, that's where you're going. That's it. And like I said, if, if Story's in there tomorrow, I might I might get crazy and throw a little Colorado stack in there. I'm not I'm not ashamed. I mean, they've been putting up – you know, a couple of nights ago they put up 12 runs. Story just hit another bomb. I don't know what the score is right now, but they're hitting a little bit recently. And they've struck out the least in the league over the, since the 1st of July that's overall, I, I it's, which is crazy to me. Yeah. It's almost hard to believe. I, I do believe you, but it's almost hard to believe. Um, but yeah, they have an 18% strikeout rate. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I kind of wanted to fade Joe Musgrove anyway. So, yeah. There we go. I'm in. Um, yeah. Kind of a tough a tough five-game slate for sure. Uh, if you get the two, I don't think there's going to be that many pitchers that do well if you get the two that do. Seems like we are on Mize and Montas probably is yep. is where I see – Myself ending up, I feel pretty confident based on our conversation that that's where you might end up as well. Feel pretty good about that, right? You fill it out from there. You make sure to get, I don't know, on these short slates, I like to get like, you know, if I don't have Peralta, I want to get my favorite Pittsburgh bat against him, which would be Brian Reynolds. If I don't yeah. have Eduardo Rodriguez, I, you know, Toronto, you could make it, maybe take a couple. Ryu, uh, you would want to take your favorite bat against him, whether that's J.D. Martinez or, you know, a number of options there. Or Hunter Renfro, you go cheap, whatever. So, yeah, I think I think roster construction is going to be important on the slate and uh, trying to, you know, get two pitchers who, who do pretty well because it's going to be uh, – it's going to be tight. It, there's not going to be a lot of uh, – it doesn't seem like, at least, great performances from the pitching. And, uh, you know, you get the one or two stacks to hit, and you're you're off to the races. So that's uh, that's Thursday's five-game main slate. Final words, Gary, for the people. Yeah, just, uh, I mean, like, like I said, it looks like we're pretty dialed in the night before on two pitchers. Yep. You just kind of have to mix, in, mix and match the stacks. Uh, there's three or four stacks there. So, I mean, you can get different and, you know, how you construct your lineups, uh, putting one-offs in there and whatnot. So, but, yeah, it's – I, I like the slate personally. I like these small, smaller slates. Yeah, me too. And uh, we do have all day baseball too. So we got the, uh, I think a five or six game early slate, something like that as well. We'll have content course uh, for all, all slates uh, and uh, free show. You know, we have it every single day on YouTube. You can search run for your sports on YouTube. That usually kicks off at four thirty Eastern time. And then we've got the premium up to lock show which starts at, uh, you know, an hour or and five or an hour and 10 minutes before lock and typically runs for an hour and a half is, is kind of the, the standard time, depending on, you know, what's going on, if we're monitoring any news or if we're just having a good time and bullshitting and all that. So all good stuff. Uh, thanks for listening. As always, we do appreciate the support. If you want to join the team at Run for Your Sports, we got football coming up. Content going to be rolling out soon. You can use promo code RPSHEATER25 
for 25% off your first monthly payment. That'll do it for us, Gary. This podcast will return uh, tomorrow, same place, same time. He is Gary. I'm DC. We'll check in next time.